Morning. This is Arnie Waters here in Boston. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Gold's down about $45 to 1625. Remember yesterday or the day before we talked about net long speculators coming in? Well, net <laughs> they've become net exiting speculators. Uh, gold trading around 1625. Remember our resistance point here is slightly below 1600 at 1589 or so. Uh, our view is that gold's going to trade pretty much in this range, staying above the resistance of uh, 1589 uh, over the Easter weekend. What happens after that? Who knows? Uh, but our long view hasn't, excuse me, our intermediate view hasn't changed. Uh, heading into the Franco and Greek elections, we may expect to see continued difficulty in the European zone. Uh, indeed, the whole policy of uh, austerity is a very dangerous policy indeed, and it's being enforced throughout the Eurozone. So in other words, companies like, excuse me, countries like Germany and France and are in such a situation that they really don't need to be very austere, but they're having to be austere because of Euro-wide policy. Uh, the head man of uh, Nomura Securities uh, spoke at length on this in Italy the other day. And he basically said that, uh, in, in their opinion, the fact that the Japanese had tried austerity for five quarters had cost the Japanese 10 years of uh, economic recession slash depression. And it was only when government spending began to pick up uh, that, in fact, uh, they, their economy began to move forward. Now, uh, the, the, the reality is that the European austerity policy is not going anywhere, and as I noted yesterday, is identical to the policy that a certain party wants us to adopt here in the United States. And that fiscal austerity policy is quite a dangerous one. My last comment on the euro area has to do with <laughs> the island of the blind. Uh, people are the same everywhere. And people talk about people in the United States. Well, there's a whole island in Greece that has four or five times the relative number of blind people that there ought to be. And as a consequence, all these people get all this free stuff. They get uh, money from the state and all that kind of thing. And uh, the fact is that they're taking advantage of the European welfare state. And this I found quite amusing. Uh, that uh, as we look around the world, we're seeing the same kind of thing done throughout the world. We're going to turn to rare earth elements now. As you know, rare earth elements are, are quite expensive and quite difficult, and the Chinese have a monopoly on them, and we're trying to fight the monopoly with our own company, Molly Corp, and Linus Corp's in the deal, and Frontier Rare Earths, and other folk are doing all kinds of cool stuff. Scientists are focusing on the other side of the process. They're trying to get eliminate the need for rare earths. Uh, they're using nanoengineering. There have been uh, things, excuse me, elements found in meteorites. Uh, they're also uh, conducting experience, excuse me, experiments where they're dramatically reducing the amount of dysprosium needed to be in batteries. The effect of all these things, I'm just pointing out to you the overhang that if any of these scientific discoveries come true any time in the next decade, the whole rare earth element thing is going to disappear, uh, except for the heavies that have things to do with uh, strategic military stuff. So I'm just letting you know that the scientists are working very, very hard at all these uh, companies that use rare earth elements to try to replace them. This is Arnie Waters. What day are you going to be happy if you're not going to be happy today? Thanks for listening and watching. Have a great day.